everyone, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. With less than two weeks before U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to decide on whether to pull the United States out of the 2050 nuclear agreement with Iran, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo concludes a hastily arranged tour of the Middle East where he discussed the matter with Saudi Arabia, Israel and Jordan. Syria state television reports that massive rocket attacks struck at Syrian military positions in the countryside of Hama and Aleppo provinces, with approximately 40 people killed, including 18 Iranians. The top diplomats of Russia, Turkey and Iran held a trilateral meeting on the Syria conflict, during which Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasizes the need to help Syria's government clear the war-torn country from terrorist organizations. With less than two weeks before U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to decide on whether to pull the United States out of the 2050 nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic of Iran, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo concluded this evening a hastily arranged tour of the Middle East, where he visited Saudi Arabia, Israel and Jordan. Just two days after the American top diplomat was sworn in, Secretary Pompeo started his regional tour in Saudi Arabia, where he underscored the need for unity in the Gulf to confront the Islamic Republic of Iran and reaffirmed Washington's support for Riyadh. That Saudi Arabia's security is a priority for the United States of America. We'll continue to work closely with our Saudi partners to counter threats to this country's security. That, of course, starts with Iran. Iran destabilizes this entire region. It supports proxy militias and terrorist groups. The newly appointed U.S. Secretary of State further announced that a consensus was reached between Washington and Riyadh on the nuclear agreement with Iran, as well as a joint effort by the two allies to push Tehran harder on amending the multinational deal, warning that if the Islamic Republic would reject new amendments, Washington would have no other choice but to withdraw from it altogether. Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al Jubeir, on his part reiterated Riyadh's position in which an increase of sanctions on Iran for exporting ballistic missiles and supporting terrorism across the region was the only way to resolve the Iran issue. <laughs> Following his visit to Saudi Arabia, Secretary Pompeo traveled to Israel for a scheduled meeting with Prime Minister B. Min Netanyahu. While the meeting was initially expected to be held in Jerusalem, Pompeo met with Netanyahu in Tel Aviv, where regional threats, particularly those posed by Iran, topped their discussions. During a joint press conference, Secretary Pompeo reiterated the critical importance of strong cooperation between Washington and its regional allies to counter Iran's destabilizing and malign activity around the world, while reiterating President Trump's efforts to fix the nuclear deal. Strong cooperation with close allies like you is critical to our efforts to counter Iran's destabilizing and malign activity throughout the Middle East and indeed throughout the world. We remain deeply concerned about Iran's dangerous escalation of threats to Israel and the region, and Iran's ambition to dominate the Middle East remains. Regarding the JCPOA, President Trump's been pretty clear. This deal is uh, very flawed. He's directed the administration to try and fix it. And uh, if we can't fix it, he's going to withdraw from the deal. It's pretty straightforward. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu emphasized the need to stop Iran from gobbling one country after another, stressing Jerusalem's commitment to assist Washington in confronting Iran's dangerous aspirations. If people thought that Iran's aggression would be moderated uh, as a result of signing the deal, the opposite has happened. And Iran is trying to gobble up one country after the other. Iran must be stopped. Its quest for nuclear bombs must be stopped. Its aggression must be stopped. Uh, and we're committed to stopping it together. The Israeli leader also took the opportunity to praise President Donald Trump for his bold decision to relocate the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, 
a move Netanyahu stressed prompted other countries to follow in Washington's footsteps. Bold decision by President Trump has prompted other countries, there are quite a few now, who are planning to uh, move their embassy to Jerusalem as well. Uh, it says something about uh, American leadership uh, and about uh, the forthright way in which uh, simple truths are being put forward and the effect this has on the international scene. Following their meeting, Secretary Pompeo departed for his next destination, Jordan. Meanwhile, the White House announced that President Donald Trump held a phone conversation last night with Prime Minister B. Mina Netanyahu about the threats in the Middle East, primarily with regard to those posed by the Islamic Republic of Iran, following up on the meeting Netanyahu held with Pompeo. Now to Syria, where state television reported that massive rocket attacks struck last night at Syrian military positions in the countryside of Hama and Aleppo provinces. While the Syrian news agency Sana did not say who was responsible for the attack, intelligence officials revealed to TV7 that the targets that were hit were command centers for Iranian-backed militias fighting alongside forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar Assad, as well as a base of the Syrian Army's 47th Brigade that serves as a center for Iranian forces. Reports that surfaced pointed to approximately 40 people that were killed in the attack, including 18 Iranians, one of whom was identified as a senior member of Iran's Revolutionary Guards that was stationed in Syria. Eyewitnesses told TV7 that gigantic flames were seen overnight at the sites that were attacked. Meanwhile in Moscow, the top diplomats of Russia, Turkey and Iran held a trilateral meeting on the Syria conflict, during which Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasized the need to help Syria's government clear the war-torn country from terrorist organizations. I am sure that today we need to help the Syrians to finish the cleansing of the country from terrorists, and we all help the Syrian government even though Iran and Turkey support opposing sides in the Syria conflict, Foreign Minister Zarif and Chavusoglu agreed that a political solution was the only way to end the bloody conflict. While well, even though both countries are deeply embroiled in the Syria conflict, they refer to foreign military interventions in Syria as illegal and unsustainable. We have always condemned the use of chemical weapons regardless of the victims or culprits, but we do not believe that uh, taking the law into somebody's own hands for political gains uh, can do anything but further complicate the situation in Syria and further exacerbate tension. I agree with Javad Zarif that the best solution is the political solution, and any military solution is illegal and unsustainable. Meanwhile, south of the Syrian capital, fierce battles were reported between Syrian government forces and militants belonging to the Islamic State. Despite government forces enjoying military domination in the Qadam area, which is a neighborhood south of Damascus, battles between the two sides were reported as intense. With Islamic State militants fighting for their lives, Damascus declared its mission to eliminate everyone and anyone belonging to the terrorist organization to root them out from wherever they may try to escape to. Nevertheless, with Islamist militant groups losing most of the territories they once controlled, the Islamic State is attempting to exert a heavy toll from forces loyal to Damascus by applying deadly methods, including suicide bombings. Thank you for watching us. Due to the 1st of May holiday in Finland, TV7 Israel News won't broadcast tomorrow. Nevertheless, we will broadcast Jerusalem Studio. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. We'll see you again for TV7 Israel News on Tuesday at the same time.